Hi everyone, this is Kathy from Kathy Cuts Paper. I'm an independent Fun Stampers Journey Coach. Today this is the card that we're going to be making. Uh, I, I just think it's so cute. This is one of those not, can't sleep at night and it just comes into your brain. So that's what this one is. So let's get started. First we need um, we need banana smoothie cardstock. We need two pieces cut four inches by five inches and then we need one piece cut five inches by a half inch. So let's start with that. We're going to stamp our little puppy and it's this stamp. It's called Pocket Pup. We'll be using the So Cute sentiment and the puppy. The other one we're not using but it's um, I want to put you in my pocket which is it's just an adorable stamp set. So here I have it on my F block and we're using Riverstone True Color Fusion ink. And we're going to put this fairly close, the ears fairly close to the top and towards the left side. There we go, little puppy. Okay, um, I'm going to clean off my stamp. Now, when I use baby wipes, I use unscented alcohol-free baby wipes. That's just to get it most of it off while I'm working. But what I do when I'm through with my project is I take the True Color Fusion Cleaner, put it on just a little bit on a rag and go over. It not only takes out off all of the um, the remnants of ink, it also conditions your stamp, so this is a really good thing. It does have um, a, an odor, it, it, not fragrance, but an odor. And I have a couple friends who have chemical sensitivities, so they don't use this, they only use the baby wipes. But as far as conditioning, and getting everything off. This is it's just a perfect item. So here we have our puppy and we're going to be coloring him. We're going to use the Journey Color Burst Pure Color pencils and these come with two trays. It's 48 pencils. Now the colors that we're using today our puppy. I forgot my black. Hang on. Because the puppy has a black nose, so we need that. Alright, so for the puppy, we are using 37, 38, and 39. For his nose, we're using 42. For the pocket, we're using 30. Isn't that a beautiful blue? But of course, it could be any color you want. And for the collar, we're using 47 and 1. Okay, so those are our, our colors. Um, because we have banana smoothie um, cardstock. That's basically the color of the dog. So we're just doing some extras with that. Um, but you don't need to worry about covering an underbase. So we'll start with the lightest color, which is 37. And I'm going to do just a base coat here. And you'll notice I'm a little bit scribbly, but we're going to be um, getting rid of the pencil marks, so it's okay. Then the next one for some shading is 38. And the easiest way to do your shading is around the edge.
and wherever there is a line printed because that kind of gives you a shadowy effect. Okay, the dark brown, which is 39, we're going to do his eyes. And then 42 for his nose. The Color Burst pencils are wonderful. They are a wax-based pencil, really nice quality, um, with a, an oil coating on them, and so it's really smooth working with them. All right, we're going to do his collar in the red. And you can see this is going really quickly. And then 47, the silver for the little tag. Okay, there we are so far. Oh, I forgot that we need to do the pocket. Again, you can do the pocket any color. In my mind, though, it was a like a denim shirt with a puppy in it. Now, see these little lines coming out here? Those are fabric folds from the shirt, so I'm going to color those the same color as the shirt, just a little line on there. We're not going to be um, doing all, the, the, all of the pocket will not show because of our fringe, just the top will. So you can either color it all if you feel like it. I'm going to stop there. Alright, for blending, there's several different ways you can blend. You can use baby oil. Uh, some people just use our, our blending stumps by themselves. Uh, I use odorless paint thinner. I put it on a little cellulose sponge and that way just kind of get it, it just puts a teeny tiny bit of it on there. But then when you go in little circles, can you see how that's smoothing? Now the reason I like the odorless paint thinner instead of uh, other blending mediums is a lot of the other ones seep through your paper. This doesn't. It's my favorite. Um, I learned about this on a YouTube video. I don't remember who I was watching, but I'm very grateful for the technique. Another benefit to using the odorless paint thinner is I can continue layering with my pencil on that. Using an oil-based product, sometimes the, the other layers don't want to stick. You know, like baby oil, mineral oil. Okay. Um, I love our blending stumps. I, I really do. What you do is if, okay, like this one, See how it has color in the tip? We have a cleaner, which is, it's a block of sandpaper. See? Then it's all clean. You can also, if they start getting dull, sharpen them so that you can get, with our small one, you can get um, into little areas. So let's start on the puppy. Now when I get a little bit of color on the blending stump, I am going to put a little bit of color into the ear. On my first sample, I did that with um, a pink, a pinkish tone, but I think I like it better just with it being um, slightly colored from what's the residual on my blending stump. Little pause. I 
live in Arizona, southern Arizona, and lots of people here have chihuahuas. I don't, I don't recall it being that way when I lived in Minnesota, um, but a lot of people people here have the chihuahuas, and so this is just such a perfect card for here. There's my puppy. I'm gonna do, um, okay, see this end I'm gonna use? It had um, a little bit of, you can see, a little bit of green. So you just rub it on your sand block till it's clean. Blow off the fuzz. And then I can come in here for the collar. There's our puppy. Okay, now let's work on our fringe. We have a piece of printed paper, and that is from the um, Designer's Choice prints. <clears throat> and it's double-sided, so this will have this, and this, this one has this narrow board on the other side. There are four sheets of each. So if you liked both sides, you would actually have two sheets you could use for each size. Now with our uh, printed paper, usually people say, oh, that's nice. I really like that. That's really pretty. But when they hold it, when I hand it to them, it's not paper paper. It, it, it's heavier. It's like a lightweight cardstock, so you actually have some body to it. Uh, okay, so we are using this one for the card. Um, I cut a strip one and a half inches wide, just across the whole 12 inches. On the back, isn't that pretty? On the back, I am going to mark, uh, it's one and a half inches. Our, um, the little panel that we're going to stamp on is half an inch, so that gives us half an inch for fringe. Pencil mark on the wrong side, on both sides here, both edges. Okay, then we have our fringe scissors, our fantastic fringe scissors. And I will go, and I, because the marks are on the wrong side, that's where I'm going to be cutting from. And just go to the line. We're going to be having that strip with the, with the sentiment on it. So if you go over the line a little bit, that's fine. When you're cutting, when you're ready to do your next cut, go over about an eighth of an inch. Because it's fringe, it's not going to be, you know, super precise. Okay, so we got that done. Now we'll do it on the other edge. The fringe scissors are good for all kinds of embellishments. Um, grass, of course, if you're doing something that you need grass. Um, something on the bottom of a skirt. Uh, something for for a party that looks like party decorations on your card. Uh, this is just a plain embellishment, and I just love them. Um, okay, so for this, you can either crunch the whole thing up, or you can use uh, your crease tool and use it to get some curl to that. You want to do it all the way to the end of each piece. And of course, remember it is paper, so you're not going to be yanking on it. So this is going to depend on how random and, and froofy you want your fringe. Okay, and <clears throat> a lot of times you can do a random fold. Some people have trouble with random, so I'm going to give you a fake random way to do it. So you'll fold down your first one, 
then you will skip one and fold down another. Then you will skip three and fold down another. And then you're going to go back to skip one and put it down, skip three and put it down. So you can do that and see it will give you like a, it appears to be random even though it's done numerically. Okay, I'm going to scrunch these. When you're doing this, if you have it so they're folded way over, you can see the back is going to show. Um, let me see, I had another one here that I was messing with um, out of a retired paper, playing with it, little short ones. The back is purple, so when it, if I have that on a card and they're folded over too much, I'm going to have purple on there, which is fine if it's a purple card. Um, so you would want to, to look, and if you have something showing you don't want, just pat it down like that. Okay, see how squishy and scrunchy this is? Okay, now we're going to stamp our sentiment. And it's the one that says, so cute. It's on my D block. Again, I'm using Riverstone. One thing I want to show you, because people in stamping can freak out sometimes. What if you go, oh no! I got that all smudged. Just turn your paper over. My dear friend Chantel always says there's two sides to paper. Okay. Um, this is randomly spaced on purpose to go along with the randomness of the fringe. But if you want it exact, and you can do it exact. Okay, I'm going to use the Easy Glide to put down the center. Okay, now we'll start assembling. Our second piece, our, our first piece of print paper for uh, the fringe was one and a half by five. Then we have a piece one and a half by four. So this, when we cut the long thing um, one and a half inches wide across the whole width of the 12 inch piece of paper, we have enough to do those. And then there'll be a little piece left over. So again, with our Easy Glide, We're going to set this in from the edge about half an inch. This is not, you know, this isn't really super picky. Okay. Then, because we have so much um, texture here, I'm going to use our white liner tape instead of the Easy Glide. I am in love with the white liner tape. My husband knows it's okay. All right, so put a piece there. Put a piece next to it. Just kind of pat that down. Okay. And then we will put this, on this one you can see it's about a quarter inch up from the edge. So that's what we're going to do. And then you can proof your fringe a little bit more. See? I do like this card. Okay, so get rid of our little liner pieces here. Next, we are going to put on some silk. This is sparkle silk. And this is my box for sparkle silk. Otherwise, it ends up all over. When you let this settle, it's totally clear except for stuff at the bottom. So shake it. 
and then uh, your inclination with this because it's like a na nail polish bottle would be to wipe you don't want to do that you want it wet pull it straight out and then you're going to be tapping get a little bit more a little bit more on my sentiment okay okay the sparkle silk what it's going to do let me get rid of the box it's going to have you see that iridescence there and that's what it's going to leave the color of your cardstock or whatever you put it on is going to show through but the iridescence is there all right let's set that aside and we will get our card base it's a standard card base out of uh, Riverstone cardstock and on our paper trimmer the green blade is for cutting the orange blade is for scoring so we're going to score that at four and a quarter use the crease tool to make that nice and sharp now because this is is darker it would be difficult to write a sentiment inside you know a personal message so that's where our other four by five piece of uh, banana smoothie comes in. So we're going to put that in. And what we'll have is a quarter inch on either side and an eighth of an inch at the bottom our spacing. There you go. And we're going to put this on here. Uh, let me check our sparkle. That's dry enough. Um, and I'm again going to use the white liner tape because we have several layers on there. Or a lot of dimension on there with the fringe. You know, you could technically Put the white liner tape um, on your banana smoothie before you even start working on the front. And it would be all flat when you were putting the adhesive on it. Brilliant ideas when you're almost through with the project, right? Okay. Take off our liner. Okay, and the spacing on this is the same. Um, a quarter inch on each side and about an eighth of an inch at the bottom. And there we go. We have two puppies with fringe and they are so cute. I hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, if you have any questions, you can comment below or you can contact me, Kathy, at kathycutspaper.com. My website is kathycutspaper.com. And I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Oh, also, uh, the dimensions and the product list will be on my blog, which is also on kathycutspaper.com. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.